Right now on ABC 10 News at 4 o'clock, we are tracking the pandemic's impact on California hospitals, even as the number of COVID cases is going down. Plus, what the county could do to protect tenants from being evicted amid the pandemic. And positively, San Diego, how a local nonprofit is saving lives by connecting shelter dogs and military veterans. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. Our California hospital system is taking a major financial hit from the pandemic. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'm Kimberly Hunt. Adding up things such as staff, beds, and testing put hospitals at a $14 billion loss last year. ABC 10 News reporter Jennifer De La Cruz explains that despite cases going down, the financial impact on our health care system will continue. At the start of the pandemic, hospitals were racing to add more space and resources, many of them still struggling to keep up with demand. Doctors and nurses were overworked. PPE and ventilators were nearly impossible to find. Healthcare leaders across the state say they're barely staying afloat. We struggle year after year to break even. A disaster like COVID puts us firmly in the red. According to the California Hospital Association, hospitals lost more than $14 billion in 2020, and they could lose another $2 billion this year. The financial damage may last for years to come. 447 days ago, UCSD treated some of the first patients flying in from Wuhan, China. We've been on a full-on sprint in what turned out to be a marathon ever since. Since then, they've invested in testing and novel therapies. They've expanded their own capacities while still sending resources to El Centro and Mexico. And they launched the state's first vaccine superstation at Petco Park. UCSD CEO Patty Mason says all of those costs are adding up. The financial impact of COVID swept over $200 million off of our UCSD health balance sheet. Dollars we were preserving to rebuild our Hillcrest Hospital. But things are on the right track. With cases in California lower than any other state, local leaders say hope is certainly on the horizon. Our economy is coming back. Kids are back in school. Uh, our Padres are winning. Uh, people are getting vaccinated. Uh, all in all, uh, we're, we're in a really good position and continue to do very well. Jennifer Dela Cruz, ABC 10 News. Hospital leaders say they're hoping for additional state and federal funding to help offset their losses. President Biden wants to give more money to families. Tonight, he'll hold his first address to Congress. He's expected to announce the nearly $2 trillion American Families Plan. That plan includes money for education, child care, and paid family leave. $800 billion will be set aside for tax cuts to families. Biden wants to pay for the plan by raising taxes for the top 1%. The plan will first need to pass the House and Senate. Meanwhile, President Biden's address to Congress will look a little different than in past speeches. Not all members will be invited to watch in person. Social distancing will also be enforced. It will also be the first time that two women will sit behind a president during the speech. Speaker Nancy Pelosi has been head of the House for years, but tonight she'll be joined by Vice President Kamala Harris as head of the Senate. Senator Tim Scott will give the Republican Party's response. President Biden will talk about his new American Families Plan tonight. One proposal in the $1.8 trillion plan calls for free two-year tuition at all community colleges. The San Diego Promise already guarantees that for some local students. So we're taking an in-depth look at how a federal program could change things here. We spoke with Dr. Constance Carroll of the San Diego Community College District. She says a federal community college program could expand who would qualify for the San Diego Promise. Most community college students are part-time students. Uh, and uh, they work, they have families and the like. If, if President Biden's uh, effort succeeds, then we will have much greater uh, flexibility to reach many, many more students. Right now, the San Diego Promise program only gives free two-year tuition to first-time, full-time students. If a federal program is enacted, as you heard, it could allow the program to expand and include part-time and returning students. You can watch President Biden's address live right here on ABC 10. We will begin that at 6 o'clock, followed by a special edition of ABC 10 News at 8 o'clock tonight. 
People in the East County continue to fight to keep two convicted sexually violent predators out of their area. And their county supervisor, Joel Anderson, is taking up the cause. He says the dumping of so many sexually violent predators in the East County is disproportionately affecting some of the poorest communities. I do believe that we do need legislation at the very minimum to say that no district should have 70% of the sexually violent uh, predators. Anderson says 67% of SVPs have been released into the East County. This comes as a judge has yet to decide if it's Mount Helix home or whether that's suitable for Douglas Badger. In two weeks, there's another hearing about a second SVP. Merle Wakefield possibly would be placed in that very same home. Anderson wants to reconvene the San Diego Sex Offender Management Council to call for action. Federal agents raided Ruli Giuliani's New York home and office today. It's unclear why his agents searched the home. The New York Times reports that investigators seized Giuliani's electronic devices, including his phone. The search comes amid the ongoing criminal investigation into Giuliani. The former New York mayor and lawyer to former President Trump has been the focus of a probe concerning his activities in Ukraine. He denies any wrongdoing and has not been charged. The police body camera footage from the death of a black man in North Carolina will not be publicly released anytime soon. Today, a judge delayed the release but did allow the family of 42-year-old Andrew Brown Jr. to view a redacted version of the recordings. Sheriff's deputies fatally shot Brown last week while trying to execute a warrant. The family says the shooting happened as Brown was trying to drive away. Peaceful protesters have been taking to the streets calling for the public release of the full raw body camera footage. The three men charged with murder in the shooting death of Ahmad Arbery in Georgia are now facing federal hate crime charges as well. Arbery, a 25 year old black man, was out for a jog near Brunswick, Georgia in February of last year. And that's when he was chased down in a truck by three men and fatally shot. Today, the Justice Department indicted Travis McMichael, his father Gregory, and William Bryan on hate crime, attempted kidnapping, and gun related charges. Warning signs are now posted at the Santa Leo State Camp Campground after a small cliff collapse. This is in Cardiff and Sky 10 was overhead around 2 o'clock this afternoon. No injuries were reported. Lifeguards are warning to stay away from this area. Vaccine hesitancy has dropped slightly. Four out of 10 people are now saying maybe or no to the shots. The percentage points were slightly higher in favor of getting the shots in March compared to a month earlier in the CBS News YouGov poll. But there are some strong holdouts in the no category, namely Christian evangelicals. And really it's because of the fact that I stand at this place of, of intersection as a, as a bridge almost between the world of secular institutions and the church that what's, that's what's led me to realize that we had a problem here with the vaccine in terms of these two worlds not understanding and frankly not trusting each other. Curtis Chang is a former evangelical pastor and Duke Divinity theologian. He addressed some of the concerns that Christians have. First off, he says Christians need to realize they're being targeted to serve other beliefs and groups. The, the average you know, evangelical Christian is listening more to external sources coming from whether it's conservative media or online uh, social or online uh, movements like QAnon or now the anti-vaxxer movement, and that this vaccine issue is really the latest uh, battlefront really for the heart and soul of the evangelical church. Chang cited the divide in churches seen in a January survey of evangelical pastors and leaders. The survey showed 95% of those leaders did plan to get COVID vaccines as compared to only about 55% of the church base. So Chang started creating short videos to address some of the reasoning Christians gave for not taking the vaccine. Chang says there's nothing in the Bible that should steer believers away. And I have to remind, end up reminding uh, Christians, my fellow Christians, you know, the second greatest commandment that Jesus said was not get government out of my life. Uh, even if as, as maybe as, as valid as that could be, it's not our highest priority. Our highest priority is to love our neighbor as ourself. And that ought to be the lens by which Christians are actually viewing this decision about vaccine. What is the most loving thing I can do for my neighbor? 
Chang also addresses what he calls misinterpretations of the Bible as a reason not to take the vaccine. Things like the mark of the beast and pro-life reasoning. You can find his videos at ChristiansandTheVaccine.com.